Hello, everybody. My name is Randy Scrapper. I'm a principal product success architect here at ServiceNow, and welcome to Ask the Ranger series. The series today will be on software installation table attributes. Today we'll look at what these attributes are and which ones should be concerned uh, for software asset management. In this video, we'll show you how to get to the software installation table. We'll talk about those primary attributes a software asset manager uh, is using or will want to use. Uh, we'll review the, the fields on the default form, uh, and then we'll jump into a list of managed attributes that are coming in on the software installation table, as well as the ones that have been deprecated before jumping into the demo. Now, to take a step back, just to remind everybody, the software installations, they come from your discovery sources, right? And those discovery sources should be moving those software installations into the software installation table. The software installation table is here. It's cmdb underscore sam underscore sw underscore install. From here, you're able to you know, see all your software installations and be able to run reports from here. Now, when you're looking at uh, the, the data that's in there and all the attributes, there's a list of attributes that software asset managers tend to uh, gravitate to because those are the ones that we have a lot of value to. And these are the ones that we primary uh, will we'll go to. And I'll go through these. So the first one is active. When we have multiple discovery sources uh, for the same software installation, only one will be marked as active. The remainder of those will be marked as false. So that's one of the things that we'll definitely want to make sure of. Is signed to. You know, we want to make sure that uh, you're leveraging the per user or per name user license metrics. So you want to make sure that the device that these um, software installations are on is assigned to somebody. The display name, discovered, uh, you know, this is what is discovered, the publisher product in addition. This is what's found on the discovery source. A discovery model, this is a reference value to the discovery model that is represented in the software installation. The publisher, the version, and the edition, uh, these are all common things that we kind of look for, as well as, as installed on. So we go back to making sure that we want to make sure that the uh, software installation is installed on a device, and we capture that, as well as that device being assigned to somebody. Some other ones that we kind of look for as uh, software asset management admins. Uh, the discovery source, you know, where is it being discovered by? So we're able to you know, then go back and, and make sure that these are being discovered properly uh, uh, and pulling back the right information. The last scan date, this is when it was last scanned on the hardware device. Uh, this is, you know, making sure that, you know, that these software installations are active. And when we say active, we're, we're saying, you know, they've been discovered uh, within the last 30 days. Um, uh, if they're over the 30 days, we, we consider those as stale records and, and we actually, uh, it, it messes with some of the, the reporting. Uh, it doesn't make sure it gives you the confidence uh, if you haven't discovered them in 30 days that they're actually there and operational. The next, you know, three uh, attributes that we look for are the normalization properties, right? So the normalized display name, the normalized product, and the normalized publisher. These are all attributes that we're going to uh, want to look to, uh, you know, look for uh, as we're running through uh, the software installations. Now, when we're looking at the uh, software installation form on here, it's a little bit small, but let's just kind of go through it, right? So from here, you know, we have the display name, we have the discovery model, 
we have the version, the publisher. You see some of these ones are not filled out. Um, but as we kind of get through and we discover we have to, you know, they'll fill them out. Um, the ones that, uh, you know, the installed on is, is there. That's on the installation tab. And if you go to the rec, uh, reconciliation tab, you know, you can see where it says discovery source or last scan. Now, these are fields that come out at, on the default form. Um, as uh, I have seen in many uh, cases before, many customers, you know, they'll want to go ahead and add some of the fields that, you know, their primary attributes that, you know, they're using. They might want to go ahead and add these to this form uh, so then you can easily find that information. Now there's a, a, a list of other managed attributes. Uh, I'll kind of go through them. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. Um, but as we go through, uh, you can kind of see and get the gist of, of which ones are out there as well as which ones that you might want to uh, track for yourself and, and for your own organization. Uh, making sure that uh, the, the, if it's on a cloud license, is it the cloud provider? Is it the cloud license type, uh, the host type? Uh, it has a, a, a round uh, a cloud discovery, right? And this is where we're using these cloud ones for cloud insights. Um, create a pattern. So this is set to true or false. If we're creating a application pattern, uh, this could be done for Microsoft and Microsoft Exchange. Uh, to help uh, better discover it. The deduped, the value is set to true if the deduplication process has been run against it. So, you know, is it is there duplicates of it? And, you know, has a process run to kind of clean that up? And this would be triggered as yes, uh, if, if it was. It's something to kind of, to kind of look out for. Um, the next is the inference calculated uh, is one that if you're, using a suite and you have uh, a suite components you know this flag is going to be set to true uh, and then and, and then you'll need to uh, set that level of of uh, inference percentage right so that inference percentage is set to true and then what is that percentage of, of inference and you'll you'll need to know that as well uh, the last use date you know, this is important to know that the, you know, the last use date, ServiceNow products and plugins do not populate the last use date. Instead, they write to the last use date in the software usage table, which is levered by rec uh, reclamation. So that's a, something to, to call out to just to make sure that you guys are well aware uh, of this important note right here. License metric, you definitely want to know some of the license metrics of that, uh, of your um, installation. How's it being uh, being tracked? Um, and then here we have some of the SCCM uh, attributes. So, you know, the groups, this timestamp. Um, we also have the software model result, uh, the software model source. And then these are the ones that are deprecated. So these are the ones that have been recently deprecated. They're still in the system. However, they're not being used uh, at this time uh, in any of the processes that are out there and not being uh, maintained. So these are some of the attributes that you might want to uh, you know, not use or make sure that your uh, company is not using. All right, now let's just jump into the demo. and We'll take a look and see how we can find the software installation table and kind of look and see what those forms look like. All right, so now we're into our, uh, our instance. So we're going to go ahead and type in our table that we want to go to. So we want to go to CMDB underscore SAM underscore SW underscore install dot list and this will bring up our software installation table and so you can see that the obviously what's across the top you'll know that you if you want to bring in some of the other attributes you can go ahead and add those across then as, as you do in any other 
uh, your filter to kind of make sure you see what you want to do. And if we want to dive into these and kind of see what uh, one of the forms look like. So let's click into one of these software installations. And from the uh, default view, you know, we, we see the display name, the, you know, the, the model, discovery model, the version. Uh, I'm not sure the publisher should be coming across, but, you know, maybe we'll need to take a look at that. We'll see that it's uh, the product, but we'll see that it's installed on this because it's one of the ones we know. Some of these are been deprecated. So if it was me, I would go back and take some of these deprecated ones away or the ones that um, that I'm not focusing on. I would try to move some of these uh, these fields away and then put some of the fields in there. And if you go over to the reconciliation uh, tab, you'll see that you have the discovery source and the last scan date. These are the fields that you know that we want definitely want to uh, maintain and, and, and manage. So that's all I have here. Uh, let's go back and summarize it. All right. So as we wrap this up today, we learned or we, we showed the uh, attributes that a software asset manager uh, we use or tend to use uh, primarily. We looked at the default form as and the fields that come on there. Uh, we reviewed the all the managed software installation attributes, and we took a look, uh, list of the deprecated attributes, the ones that aren't being used anymore. And for more information, you know, you can follow the Ask the Ranger series on YouTube, uh, or you could uh, go out to the product documentation. And even the ServiceNow community is a good source of information. We look forward to hearing you for the next series. Thank you. Bye-bye.